Hey guys, so a couple of months ago, I posted this image to Pinterest. This is an image of a chain simulation that I made at that time, around that time. I made it using the Unity game engine. This is a game engine that many people use, and many games have been made with it. And since I started using it, I've definitely turned a blind spot away from that light. So, this is definitely going to be a different video, as you might already be able to tell. With no further ado, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is making this chain simulation from scratch. This is likely going to be a series in which we're going to be modeling the chain lengths firstly, setting up an LOD system, this stands for level of detail, and basically what that means is that we're going to swap different models of the chain lengths depending on the view distance. And these separate models are going to be smoother and lower poly than others. This is a method that is used extensively in video games to improve performance because you only need to see so many polygons in a scene at once. Then we're going to be adding collision and physics to each of the chain links. And then we're going to position the chain links into chains. Then we're going to be making an environment maybe later using a height map and the terrain system. So we're going to basically recreate the final simulation that I made with the environment in the image, but we're gonna do this over a series. So, the first thing that you wanna do is to crack open a new scene in Unity. You need to name this Chain Sim. I have time to type in simulation. As the template, we're going to choose 3D because this is a three-dimensional project. I already have like a folder set up to save this. Let's just hit Create. And to open this, this can take some time. I hear that in Unity 2019, they're going to be making significant improvements to the asset import pipeline, which means that there will be less waiting for projects to load. Wait for that. I'm just gonna stop this recording. Okay, so once we have our project open, the first thing we'll do, like I said, is to model the chain links. So go to the asset store tab, and what we're going to be using for this is a Unity extension called ProBuilder, which has now been acquired by Unity if you don't see this Asset Store tab, by the way, you can go to Window, General, Asset Store, or hold down Command and press 9 if you're on a Mac, by the way, or Control 9 on Windows. You want to choose this one, Unity Technologies. And now, what we're going to do is hit Import. Now, it will say download if you haven't already did that. The reason it says import is because I already have it on my system. I've already done that. So you would do that if you haven't done that, and then you would hit import. It will say import then. So we're going to import this, and it will bring up this dialog, and you can choose which stuff to import. We're going to import all of it in this case. Don't really want to take the risk of unchecking. Okay, this can take a while. So we'll just need to wait for this. It does say here, API update required. Um, maybe because I already imported it, or maybe it's just because it's like slightly older. Uh, maybe because I already imported it, it's like older than the newest version. I don't know. However, because we just created an empty project, this does not really matter to us because we can do this easily again. So we don't need to create the backup and more waiting. Okay, so once it's imported, you should see a pro core folder in your project. This contains different tools, packages, like in this sort of pro core category. Um, and this includes pro builder and pro grids, which by the way, it's probably a good idea to import that as well. This is a lot smaller, so it shouldn't take nearly as long, which that illustrates nicely. Basically, this is a tool, it's very simple, that allows you to move your selections on a grid and uniformly move things, and when combined with ProBuilder, it can create like a pretty nice workflow. Once imported, we need to make it visible to start using it. To do this, go to the menu bar and select Tools, ProBuilder, ProBuilder window. Under ProGrids, you can also disable the ProGrids window if you want, and this will disable it. Dimensions overlay, it's probably a good idea to show this because it will make our selection movements visible we'll be able to see how much we're moving it and things like that. Now, once the window is open, this is what you can see here. I have it set to a dockable window 
and you can open it as a floating window. I have it set to dockable though. Then you can also use either icon mode or text mode. I find text mode kind of useful because I can kind of get a better sense of what some things do. I'm going to dock this right here and then to model the chain links what I'm going to do is to give myself a bit more real estate here then select the new shape option. This will bring up a window with a drop down and this has a bunch of different primitives which is what we call simple stock shapes that you can choose from. Now I'm going to select the torus shape and this is a donut shape and it might make sense why I'm choosing this shape because this is what I'm going to be making into a chain. Because this is a modeling tool, we're going to select half of it and move it or extrude it to create the chain. The first two settings are the rows and columns and let me just turn off smooth shading to get a better sense of what this does. The rows, if you increase this, it will increase the amount of segments of the tube of the torus. Now, if I decrease or increase the columns, reduces and increases the segments along the torus, like this way. Now, for the first, so what I'm going to do now is to set the rows to 16 and the columns to 32. I'm going to leave this define inner out radius unchecked and then select one as for the radius and something like, ah, this selection is getting in the way. Something like 0.25 as for the tube radius. I'm going to leave the horizontal circumference and vertical circumference as is because what these do is they decrease the circumference lengthwise and tube wise. Let me just show you an example of that right now. Interestingly, it does kind of condense the geometry, making it kind of look smoother. As for the rows and columns, all of these sides of the torus are faces. The rows times the columns is how many faces is on this model. So because this is 16 by 32, if you do the math, it's about 512. Now, because we are making a chain simulation, we obviously need multiple chain links to make chains that actually behave like, well, chains do. So if I turn smooth shading off, you can see the polygons here. However, if I turn smooth shading on, you can see that it does look smooth, however it's actually the same number of polygons because smooth shading is actually an interpolation technique that is used to make models look smoother than they actually are. So now we are going to select build torus. This is also going to allow us to edit the mesh. Because this, it does look almost perfectly smooth here. Again, we're fully zoomed in on this chain. We're not going to be fully zoomed in on this chain because otherwise we're not obviously going to be able to see linked chains. So we're going to just zoom out on this to get an idea of just how, like at this stage, you can't really see any like lines. You can see kind of lines, edges on the outside. However, if we zoom more out, we can't see that anymore. And at this point, that level of detail can become extremely redundant, especially as you get farther out to like this, definitely very redundant to have that level of detail. So we're going to create another torus. And for this one, 24 is actually the level of detail in columns that I was going to choose for level two. However, the rows, I'm going to set this to half of 24. This is generally what I'm going to do. Towards the end, I'm definitely going to kind of stray from this. Now I'm going to set the tube radius to the same thing as last time and leave all this stuff as is again and leave smooth shading on and hit build again. New shape, torus, I'm going to choose eight rows by 16 columns. Again, I'm going to set the tube radius to 0.25, build. For the fourth level of detail, eight columns, believe it or not, by six rows. And this really starts to look very low poly. And in fact, if I was to turn smooth shading off, you can really see that this is not very smooth. However, remember we'll be viewing this from very far away. And from this distance, even with smooth shading turned off, it definitely can look decent and not redundant without being redundant. Again, the tube radius 0.25, 
build. And now we're actually going to create another level of detail because we're going to actually put hundreds of chains, I believe, in the final scene. So we want to have a level of detail actually that is very, very minimal. What I'm going to do is to select six columns and this will make it kind of hexagonal instead of octagonal for the last one. And I'm also going to choose four rows. That's right, a diamond shaped tube revolving around six segments. Tube radius to 0.25, leave all the stuff as is again and hit build. Now we're going to select all of them, right click on their transform component and hit reset. And this is going to bring them all to the same position and this will prepare us as well for the thing that we're about to do here, which is to space them so it's easier to work with them. We're going to type in three into the second one, six into the last one, the third one, nine into the fourth one, and 12 into the last one. Let's look at our details again. The first one is really smooth. The second one is a bit less smooth. And the third one is a bit less smooth yet. The fourth one is octagonal with a hexagonal tube. And the fifth one is hexagonal around itself with a diamond tube. So the next thing I'm going to do is to select the last one and then I'm going to rotate it by 30 degrees on the y-axis so that we can make this into a chain in a different way from the rest of them because this is kind of a special one because this is lower poly than the rest of them. So it's actually rotating around a pivot point that is not the center of the chain so now what I'm going to do simply is to select the center pivot option that Pro Builder comes with. And then I'm going to rotate it by 30 degrees now. So then we're actually going to make all of these into chains. So now I'm going to select the first torus. Then I'm going to go into face mode and try to select half of it. Actually, it might be better to be in the right view here. Another thing that we want to make sure is that the select hidden elements are on. It will select faces, elements of the model that are obscured, so are on the underside of the actual chain. Top view makes this perfectly aligned so that our box selection is also perfectly aligned with this as well. Box select this again, and we also want to set the rect to intersect or complete would also mean that you'd want to this part of the box selection beyond this point because it will need to completely encapsulate all of these faces to select them. If we try to move them, you will see a problem here. And this is actually because snapping in ProGrid is turned on. So now what we want to do is toggle it off. Now when we move it, we don't get problems. However, we want to make extra geometry this part here. We don't want to move this because that will slant this part. It will just interpolate like these faces. And that's not really what we want because once we get to our lower poly models is going to be completely skewed and asymmetrical. It seems that we have two options. One is to hold shift, move, and this will extrude the faces. However, it won't only extrude this part, it will extrude all of it. I swear that when I did this last time, it only extruded this part of it for some reason. However, one thing that we can also do is to create a workaround for this and add extra geometry that is really close to each other around this part here and basically create a extra loop of edges so that we can move this chain and get a similar result instead of extruding it. So what we're going to do next is to go into edge selection mode and then we're going to select this edge and this edge and then we're going to select the insert edge loop option and this is going to insert a loop of extra edges around here and around here. So two loops of extra geometry. So this is our workaround. We're going to scale this down and this is what we're doing just for the first model. We might do something different later. It seems like it might be a bit small on the x-axis so we're going to also change it like that here. For the second one, again, select this edge and this one. Select these edge loops scale, 
move, and then maybe scale here. By the way, I just hit R to change into the scale mode, and if you hit E, it'll rotate, W will move, and Q will change to the panning tool. So you might recognize this, why it's set up this way. Because the top left corner of your keyboard has a row of keys that begin with Q, W, E, R, and T. This seems to work actually. Select this model, just click deselect this part. This actually seems like it might be working for all of them. So maybe as it gets lower poly, things don't become different. It actually seems to align pretty well. I actually like this method. This workaround is actually pretty cool. This one is a bit special because I want to move the top part, stretch this middle part here. Because this is a such a low poly model, I want more control over how it's rotated and how many sides there are. Now, we're going to select this face. So once we have this selected, I'm also going to select all of these, shift box select this part and top half of all of these chains as well. Hold down shift and box select all of these top halves that we just separated and select this one finally. So this is the selection that I'm going to move and not extrude, and these are the selections that I'm going to move because we created edge loop here, a workaround for a problem that we just have. Now I'm going to type in something like 1 in the Z axis of this quick offset here, hit apply, it actually will move our selection in this direction. So now hit apply and this will create all of our chains automatically at the same time. 